My name is Cindy Aguilar and I'm a policy specialist with Texas Interface Center for Public Policy, the research and education arm of Texas Impact, and I'm speaking in strong support of the committee substitute for HB 1266, and I'm pleased to report that the Senate version of the bill got passed out favorably from the Senate today. Thanks. Um, in addition to representing the thousands of faith members of Texas Interface Center for Public Policy and Texas Impact, I've also seen firsthand the benefits of third-party review. Previously, I was Associate Director of Special Projects at the Correctional Association of New York, which is an independent agency that's tasked with monitoring the conditions in New York prisons and report back to the legislators and the public with our findings. This session at the Capitol, I've heard a lot the words accountability and transparency. I've heard a lot about the intention of finding the best solutions to the state's problems, and it is for those reasons that I'm standing here today. I understand that many people are fed up with studies, interim charges, reviews, and I really strongly share that sentiment. But what has become painfully clear is that we just don't have enough information, and that inf lack of information presents, prevents us from developing effective reforms to administrative segregation policies and practices in Texas. While in New York, I visited over two dozen state prisons, going cell to cell from solitary confinement units to mental health units, speaking to correctional and administrative staff and incarcerated individuals. These visits allowed us to make recommendations that were based on data, based on fact, and that consequently resulted in meaningful reforms. While I could speak for hours about New York's isolation units and programs for individuals with mental illness, the unfortunate reality is I could only spend a few minutes speaking about Texas's. You've heard a lot about the shocking statistics about Texas's administrative segregation population, the high number of individuals with mental illness in ADSEG, and the long amounts of time people are spending in isolation. And Representative White covered a few of the things that we don't know. We don't know how many people are in diagnosed with a mental illness prior to their placement in ADSEG and how many are diagnosed post. We don't know how many are decompensating while in administrative segregation and requiring transfer to crisis programs or are in need of suicide watch. We don't know what additional measure, measures the department is taking in response to disciplinary problems in ADSEG units. Um, and if I knew the answers to these questions, I can assure you that I would not be standing here today asking you to support this legislation. I would be here with concrete su suggestions to safely decrease the ADSEG population, saving the state millions of dollars, um, as it has been proven in other states. I would be here offering recommendation as to how best divert individuals with mental illness from administrative segregation, positively impacting both public health and public safety. The committee substitute for House Bill 1266 will enable us to find the answers to these questions and return next session with substantive legislation. Many of our members throughout the state have signed on to an interface leader statement on the use of administrative segregation, and their message is as follows. As Texas religious leaders, we accept a responsibility to advocate for the just and humane treatment of all people. We acknowledge a special responsibility to those most unable to advocate for themselves and those who are too often seen as unworthy of forgiveness, attention, or respect. Our faith traditions are clear that the universal call to care for the least of these includes those in prison. In Hebrews 13:3, followers are instructed, remember those in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. For reasons of faith and conscience, we find the moral price tag of solitary confinement too high to pay, and we urge our legislators to take action. This bill is the first step to accomplish that, and we encourage you and urge you to support committee substitute for hospital 1266. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate you being here. Well, oh, yeah. Just one question, quick question, question for you. Question. Uh, did anybody, has anybody asked um, TDCJ if they have this information and could they divulge it? I, I have done two public information requests and gotten some information, but there's still a lot that we haven't been able to get, and I think some of the other advocates have had similar experiences, as have some other legislative offices. Have, have you gotten, um, it's just not available, or we don't know, or we don't want to give it to you, or we don't want to take the time to give it to you? If, for example, you know, does, is mental health treatment available in the unit? Yes. There's no description how, what kind of, Medical, mental health treatment, how often, who's doing it. So I think it's just the level of kind of information. Question. Yeah, yeah, and, and not to be, uh, you know, a smart aleck, but I mean, if you ask me, is there any mental health treatment, I say yes or no. You didn't. I was, really say I was more clear. This in program. My, okay. I was very okay. clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was very All right. clear. I well, out. maybe you know. Uh, some of us could sit down and probably get you some more value information. It's not like, you know, obviously I like studies. You know, we do a lot of studies here in, in Austin. But um, maybe just, you know, I, I just know that whenever uh, 
my nice lady back in the district, uh, some gentleman over there, I think his name is Jeff Baldwin, if I have a question, and I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to chalk it up that I'm a member of the House that they just do this, but uh, I say, I don't know this about TDCJ, and she calls this guy Jeff Baldwin, and all of a sudden all his information, probably too much information, comes back. So uh, you, you need to know Jeff Baldwin. Yeah, you should get to know he's a nice guy. But maybe we could just help out with just getting this information. There's so you a, have to go a level this. of detail that's really needed, and part of the proposal in the committee substitute is that the report, the third-party review would lay out recommendations for how the ad psych population could be reduced mm -hmm. and how individuals could be diverted, the individuals with mental illness could be diverted, and how the length of time that individuals spend could be redu reduced. I got mm -hmm. some, I did ask the department, and this information I got was the longest amount of time that somebody has spent consecutive in administrative segregation. And the answer was 10,115 days, oh which is 27.7 years in a cell, mm. by yourself, 23 hours a day, one hour a day out. Mm. That's just problematic. Mm. You know, I've talked about that. I know. Yeah. And I have somebody who might, who's here to testify who might change your views. Okay. I hope so. Yes. Sandy, thank you for being here. Appreciate your testimony.